From California to Alabama, four keys to surviving a big transition. (laughs) That's what we're talking about in today's episode. This is going to be good. So let's go. Welcome to the Thrive Podcast. If you want to thrive in your life and business while keeping God first, you're in the right place. This is the show for leaders who want to leave a legacy of love, encouragement, and generosity. You want to be remembered for the way you positively impacted the lives of others and made a lasting difference. You want God to order your steps. Sometimes you just need a nudge in the right direction to take those steps. The Thrive Podcast will help you take the right steps, overcome obstacles, and equip you for the kind of success that matters to you. And now your host, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to this brand new podcast episode of The Thrive Show with yours truly, Giovanna Lady J. I'm so excited that you are here. You are in the right place if you want to thrive in your life and in your business while keeping God first. This is the place for high achievers, dreamers, those who want to go to the top. Oh, yes, we come together every Thursday for about 15 minutes or less to give you inspiration and implementation implementation to help you experience success and significance. I'm so excited you're here. So today we're talking all about Mm, transition. And I'm going to give you four keys to surviving transition. One of the biggest questions that I still get today, even after having been in Alabama for some time now is, wow, what was that like? How did you do it (laughs) moving from California to Alabama? And you know what? The short answer is only God. (laughs) But along the way, God has given me uh, strategies and tactics. And there were things that I was able to do to help make the process much, much smoother. And so today I'm just speaking to you from my heart. I'm speaking to you from experience. And my prayer is that something that is shared here today will help you If you're going through any kind of transition, and especially if you are considering a big move from one part of the country (laughs) to another part, or if you are, you know, just any kind of transition, really, these four keys can apply. All right. So let's just dive right in. Number one is find a passion you love. Okay, so it's so important. If you are leaving your family, for example, all of my family, all my friends, are in California. Okay. Uh, you know, I've made, I've made many here as well, but you know, those who time tested, you know, foundational root strong people, those are in my home state. And so it's so important that you find a passion that you love, not only to help, you know, keep yourself busy and to keep your mind growing, but also so that you don't fall into a depression because it's so easy to think about what you came from instead of what you're going to. Okay. I'll say that again. It's so easy to dwell on what you came from and the things that you're missing instead of what you are going to. Trust me, I know what it is to miss family. I know what it is to miss friends. That's why number two to surviving transition is to go home often. Go home often, visit your family, visit your friends, remember your roots. That's so important that you don't get away from that because those people that helped you then, they will help you later down the line. And you can't, you you just don't throw away family. You just don't throw away good friends. And so always, always, always remember your roots and hold strong to those. So number one is find a passion you love. Number two, go home often and remember your roots. Let me circle back to number one again, really quick. One of the ways that you can help find a passion that you love is immerse yourself in really great books. One of the things I started doing, and I got to give a shout out to one of my girlfriends, um, Wheezy, (laughs) she knows who she is. (laughs) Um, But one of the things that she, and she's an attorney. And one of the things that she helped me with when I first, when I first made the move was, you know, just immerse yourself in learning and in personal development and in growth. And as I started reading one book, I wanted to read more and more and more. And as I began to grow and expand, that love of learning is how my business was started. 
wow, that love of learning is really how the podcast was even birthed because I was learning so much from what I was, you know, from different mentors and coaches and leaders and seminars and conferences and summits that I would go to that I wanted to pass that on to the people that I was around and the people that God blessed to be in my life. So make sure that you are reading great books. Make sure that you aren't just um, keeping your mind or your thinking small. No, expand your territory and find a passion that you love. Okay. So that was number one. Number two, go home often. I already said that one. Remember your roots. Okay. In fact, it's, it's always a great idea. If you have frequent flyer miles, you know, make sure that you set up a category line item in your budget called home so that that way you can save every month so that when it's time for you to take a trip, it's not breaking the bank for you to go. No, you've been saving up all year long to go on that trip. All right. Uh, Let's see. Number three is to explore your new area and learn. So if you're moving from one state to another, one of the things that can help alleviate and kind of help numb some of that uh, immediate pain from moving from one place to another is to explore your new area. So when I moved here to Montgomery, it is, you know, uh, the Bible belt and also the heartbeat of the civil rights movement. And so I looked at that and I just began to explore all of the amazing things that are right here in this city, the Rosa Parks Museum, the Equal Justice Initiative, the Legacy Museum, the home of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Dexter Memorial Baptist Church. There is so much history here, the Freedom Riders Museum. And it just, and it baffles me that people who are from here haven't even visited some of the places that I just mentioned. It just baffles me because you have people that fly in from all over the country to take advantage of what is right here in our own backyard. But that's how it is in most places. People take for granted what is right in their own backyard. And other people are coming from flocking from all around the world to see the treasure that you have. And so there are a lot of people that have taken advantage of what they have right here. But my goodness, when I began to talk to some of the locals and say, wow, have you visited this place? That's just 15 minutes away. No, you know, I never been. What? Are you kidding me? We have so much history here. And so explore your new area and learn. All right. So finally, number four is to surround yourself with good friends. Now I use that word friends very cautiously because friends ought to be the ones that you can call at one or 2 AM in the morning that you can talk to, talk about anything to, right? Surround yourself with good friends. Now it's going to take time. It's going to take time. Um, to, I feel like I'm at a Bible study for a second. I I almost said everybody say time, (laughs) but it's going to take time to develop good friendships. Okay. Those friendships need to be tested. They need to be proven and they need to be marinated in experience, right? So a lot of the friends that you had in that old place that you're, you're, you're missing that your heart is aching for that. Your heart is yearning for that. Trust me. I understand every side of that. I understand every side of that. But one of the things that you can help do to uh, help thrive in your new place is to surround yourself with good friends. Now, those good friends don't just have to be in the new city that you're in. Thanks to technology and Zoom and all this that we have, you can have friends in other states. You can even develop closer friendships with the people that you left because you're talking and communicating on a more regular basis. So nourish those friendships, cherish those friendships because those are the things that are going to help you actually go to the next level. They're going to help sustain you when you're lonely, when you're sad, when you feel like you don't have anybody to talk to, when you feel misunderstood. Yes, been there, done that, got the t-shirt on all of those. But listen, you can thrive through this. God delights in taking those things that you know, baffle our minds. He delights in taking those things and, and turning them into something for his glory. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called 
according to his purpose. So because you are called according to his purpose, he is not going to leave you alone in this situation. He is not going to leave you loveless. He is not going to leave you lonely. He is not going to leave you sad. You are not alone. My friend, you may have moved. You may have transitioned. You may have done something completely different than what other people may have expected or even saw coming, but God is with you. The same God, hallelujah, the same God mm, who was with you in that old place is with you in the new place. Yes, he is. He is with you right now, right here. He promised to be an ever present, ever present. That means always an ever present help in the time of trouble. So if you don't have anybody to talk to, you can talk to him, but listen, listen, develop those friendships and, and try to talk to and form friendships with other people who are transplants as well with other people who, you know, say, Oh yeah, I'm originally from this area. And I know what it is to be like in another area. You all will have some common ground immediately to talk about. Okay. <laughs> and it's amazing how many people, there are more people that are attracted to this message of from California to Alabama, how to survive transition that I ever would have imagined because there are a lot of people who make big moves every single day. Your situation, while it is unique, it is, it is not, it is not unordinary, right? Meaning that other people have gone through as well. So you are not alone. Remember these four keys to surviving the transition. Number one, Find a passion that you love and make sure that you go all in on that passion so that when there are times of loneliness or depression or whatever else may creep up, you have that passion that you can pour yourself into to help yourself thrive and help others thrive through the process as well. All right. Go home often. Number two, remember your roots, go home often, set up a line item in your budget or create a savings account at your bank and just deposit money in there every month so that you can have money saved up for when it's time to take your special trips back home. Number two, uh, number three, explore your new area and learn. Okay. Make sure that you are uh, uh, taking advantage of all the beautiful things right in your own backyard, right? Uh, it's so easy to talk about what you're missing if you don't take time to look at the beauty that's around you right now. Instead of wishing for what you don't have, uh, want what you do have. <laughs> and, and, and when you do that, wow, gratitude, gratitude, the posture of the heart makes life so much easier. And when the posture of your heart is gratitude, Mm. You talk about a load being lifted. It makes life that much easier when your heart is in a posture of gratitude. Lord, I thank you for this place. Yes, I miss the, my home. Yes, I miss where I'm from. Yes, I miss my family. Yes, I miss my friends. But I thank you for where I am now because for where I am now, I know that you are with me. I know that you promised to never leave me or forsake me. I know that you are with me and that you're going to help me thrive in this new place. All right. So just make sure that you are. Uh, uh, counting your blessings. And once you start counting, mm, you'll lose count because there are too many to count. All right. And then finally, number four, surround yourself with good people, good friends, right? And that's going to take time unless you've, you know, um, already have those great, great friends that you can connect with, then make sure that you are building and developing those friendships. But in the new place, you're going to want some people in the new place as well. So the Bible also says in order to have a friend, Friend, you must do what? Show yourself friendly. So, you know, don't go around judging everything, judging everybody, because at the same way you judge others, you'll be judged yourself. So say, have an open heart and open hand and say, God, send those people to me or, or, or send me to the people that you want me to touch and let that relationship thrive and flourish the way you would see fit. All right. As I close, I want everybody to do this. Open up your hands, your hands so that they are facing the ceiling. All right. You got it. So you have your hands open and immediately when you're in this posture, it's a posture of receiving and it's also a posture of giving. And so it's an open, your, your, your blood pressure immediately goes down. Your heart 
uh, takes on a whole different temperament because your hands are open that says, yes, I want the best for this situation. Yes, Lord, use me in this situation. But now if you clamp your fist, guess what? That immediately signals closed, you know, don't come near. I don't, you know, I'm closed off to this situation. So if you're having a hard time, here's a very tactical thing that you can do. Open your hands as you pray, open your hands as you make that call or as you, um, you know, explore the new area, whatever it may be, have an open heart and an open mind. And as you do that, that's going to help you adjust to the whole situation. And here, finally, let me leave you with this. Be proud of where you're from. Don't ever minimize who you are or where you're from just because you're in a new place. No, be proud of where you're from. If you are from a beautiful area, be proud of that. If you're from a rundown ghetto area, be proud of that too. Because guess what? Guess what? You are here. You are still here and you are developing and you are growing and you are thriving. So be proud of where you're from and own where you are from. Speak with authority. Speak with love speak with grace and speak with honor and know that you will get through whatever situation you're going through. My friend, I hope that these four keys to surviving transition have been helpful to you. If I can make it, (laughs) I know you can make it too. Thank you so much for listening. And remember where God guides, God provides and where God directs, God truly does protect. We'll see you next time. It's your time. Are you a coach, entrepreneur, or leader? Are you someone who wants to keep God first in your business? Well then, it's your time to shine. Join the exclusive mastermind of world-class leaders inside Thrive, led by Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Get ready to clarify your purpose, amplify your strengths, and thrive financially from what you already know. Sign up today at Javana.com. That's J-E-V-O-N-N-A-H dot com.